नमस्कार स्वागत है आप सभी का पीएमई विद्या चैनल में आपके साथ मैं हूं मुक्ता कांडियाल और आप देख रहे हैं हमारा ये लाइव इंटरेक्टिव सेशन और आज के हमारे सत्र में जिस विषय पर हम बात करने वाले हैं वो है इंग्लिश और आज हम अपने इस सत्र में पढ़ेंगे एक पोएम और पोएम का शीर्षक है अ लेजेंड ऑफ द नॉर्थ लाइन और आज का हमारे ये सत्र कक्षा नौ के छात्रों के लिए तो आप हमें ए पी के चैनल नंबर नौ पर इस वक्त लाइव देख सकते हैं तो यदि आपको कोई भी प्रश्न हो इस सत्र से रिलेटेड तो आप जरूर हमें फोन करके पूछ सकते हैं हमारा फोन नंबर है एट एट जीरो जीरो फोर फोर जीरो फाइव फाइव नाइन आप चाहें तो ईमेल के द्वारा भी हमारे साथ जुड़ सकते हैं हमारा ई एड्रेस है डी टी एच डॉट क्लास टेन क्लास नाइन एट और चलिए आज का ये सत्र हम शुरू करते हैं पोएम को पढ़ते हैं लेकिन उससे पहले आज के जो हमारे एक्सपर्ट हैं सबसे पहले मैं उनका परिचय आपसे करा देना चाहती हूँ आज के हमारे एक्सपर्ट हैं डॉक्टर अमित रंजन सर इज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट सी आई टी एन सी आर टी नमस्कार सर बहुत बहुत स्वागत है आपका आ, तो चलिए बच्चों हम ये सेशन शुरू करते हैं आपके कोई भी डाउट हो तो आप लेकर बैठिए आप फोन करके हमें पूछिए तब तक हम अपना ये सत्र शुरू करते हैं सर की तरफ सीधे रुक करते हैं और सर से जानते हैं कि क्या मतलब है इस पोएम का और क्या हम आज इसमें पढ़ने वाले इस पोएम के द्वारा सर Thanks a lot, Mukta. Um, hello, friends. Um, this is a poem from the text B High for class nine, um, which is in your chapter five. It's called "A Legend of Northland" by uh, uh, Phoebe Cary. Phoebe Cary was an American uh, poet um, mm -hmm. in the mid 19th century, and um, it's it's a long poem. So let's uh, not waste much time sure. and get straight away into the poem. <clears throat> And this is a portrait of uh, Phoebe Cary. She lived between 1824 and 1871, and um, uh, she grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, in um, America. And uh, she wrote other things, but she was actively discouraged from writing. So she wrote with her sister, and her works have survived. So it's um, it's very interesting. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's. and this song is a ballad um, a ballad uh, this poem is a ballad a ballad is a poem which is meant for um singing which is meant also earlier for dancing mm -hmm. it's in verse form mm -hmm. always and here is the origin of the word uh, from old french ballad which means a dancing sound a song and which predates to latin which in which uh, ballet is to dance and you can see see the word in different forms like ball dance ballerina and so on and so forth and so finally the meaning of it um, now as we settle on it is a short narrative poem suitable for singing all right let's read the poem <clears throat> and we'll explain it along the way away away in northland where the hours of the day are few and the nights are so long in winter that they cannot sleep them through when they harness the swift rain dear to the sledges when it snows and the children look like bears cubs in their funny furry clothes so as we can see um the rhyme scheme of it is alternating second and fourth lines the first and the third do not um, rhyme but still it's a powerful um, verse in terms of its um, it, its rhyme so it's it, you can sing it actually and so um, the, the poem says away away the first two stanzas away away in the northland northland refers to the arctic so she's being in um, america is talking about the northern reaches of canada where um, as students would know from their geography lessons um, the earth is tilted at 23 and a half degrees centigrade mm -hmm. uh, sorry um, <clears throat> 23 and a half degrees and um, um, so which makes um, the arctic circle which is above 66 and a half degrees amenable to summers which are 6 and a half 6 mm -hmm. months and the winters are also 6 months so sun doesn't set for 6 months mm -hmm. and then there's night for 6 months so where the hours of the day are few <clears throat> and so it's on the north pole but as you go south uh, south up um days could be 20 hours and nights could be 20 hours in the winter with hours of the day are few and the nights are so long in winter that they cannot sleep them through um it's a very interesting metaphor that you cannot sleep through the night because the night is so long and endless um and which is also um hinting at at the desperation at the loneliness of human condition reflected in the nature where they harness the swift reindeer to the sledges when it snows and this is a very um christmas image of the reindeer yeah, pulling santa, santa claus 
and the children look like bears cubs in their funny furry clothes of course children laden with all the clothes look like um, bears cubs and that's um, a sledge um, the standard image of santa claus and i just added the summer solstice also just in case um, um, you can see that the earth is tilted and so there'll be summer on the uh, <clears throat> northern reaches for 6 months straight and this is the northern um, summer so this is the opposite of what is being described in the poem this is when it's 6 months of summer <clears throat> the next stanza is they they tell them a curious story i don't believe it is true and yet you may learn a lesson if i tell the tale to you so now the poet is talking about a curious story that is very popular in this region and it's very interesting in the second line you see that she also says i don't believe it is true mm. so she is saying that she is making a clear distinction between history mytho- history and mythology mm. that a legend is a legend mm. something which is on the level of myth mm-hmm. um, but it's not history so she's making it clear and she's also making it clear and yet there are lessons to derive from mythology mm. because it contains information about the society how the society functions what are the emotions and the feelings of the people and so on and so forth once when the good saint peter so peter is one of the 12 apostles of um, um, jesus <clears throat> and he is called the fisher of men as you can see at the bottom over there <clears throat> once when the good saint peter lived in the world below and walked about it preaching just as he did you know so this is just a repetition for rhyme sake but mm. basically it's a story about peter going to the northland to these northern parts of uh, of the world where the winters are very harsh and this is um, a very interesting uh, painting by pietro perugino an italian artist and this painting is in sistine chapel rome where jesus christ is giving the keys to saint peter and so these are sort of the keys to heaven and so okay. jesus authorizing peter um to spread god's message mm. and therefore peter is very powerful as this picture suggests in terms of um <clears throat> giving the message of god to people so peter he comes to the he came to the door of the cottage in traveling around the earth where a little woman was making cakes and baking them on the hearth so he is walking around tired traveling around the earth and he reaches the house where a woman was making cakes baking cakes on her hearth hearth is the fireplace mm. um at the bottom you can see that uh, the use of hearth as a cynic doki is also mentioned just for some extra learning mm. the cynic doki is where you use a part for a hole um a part of um, an idea or an object mm. to express the hole okay. so the fireplace the hearth represents the home because it's also the heart of the home and also because it's fire where the food would cook where there would be warmth where people would gather around so for example she left the hearth to work in a faraway land which means that she left the comfort of her home to work in a faraway land anyway so uh, saint peter reaches this um, cottage where this um, woman is making um, cakes and being faint with fasting because he has been fasting for the day was almost done um he roams around all day preaching the message of of god to people he asked her from her store of cakes to give him a single one and so to break his fast um and he's a spartan character who wants only a little food he just wants one cake let's see what happens then so she made a very little cake but as it baking lay and the stanza here begins with she made a very little cake which shows a miserly nature mm. that she's baking cakes and he wants only one mm. but she'd bake a very small one for him like many people when they ask to give away something they want to give away what is the most useless to them or what is the smallest to them um <clears throat> she looked at it and thought it seemed too large to give away so she looks at the cake she's baked and mm. to her it looks like it's very small mm. so she decides not to give this one mm. and bake another one therefore she needed another and still a smaller one mm. so she makes a cake another cake another cake mm. and all of them look large to her mm. and so she makes smaller and smaller mm. 
but it looked when she turned it over as large as the first had done. And all of them looked big enough to her, not good enough to be given to her. So the cake is large and her heart is small. That is basically the message that is going out over here. And here, <clears throat> need is um, um, uh, working any kind of flour or clay into dough or paste with hands to ata gudna jisko kehte then she took a tiny scrap of dome and rolled and rolled it flat and baked it thin as a wafer, but she couldn't part with that. So after that, when she is baking the cakes and they're all turning out to be large, they can't be made any smaller, then she makes it very thin. She, she thinks that if it can't be made small, at least it can be made thin. Okay. And it's as thin as a wafer, as a papad. Um, and even that she couldn't part with, even that looked too large to be given away to a, to a beggar. So to say. For she said, my cakes that seem too small when I eat of them myself are yet too large to give away. And this basically sums up her entire mindset, her entire attitude. Yeah. When she eats them, she thinks of them as too small and which is why she makes too many. But and when she yeah. has to give them away, they appear too large. And this is the equation of giving and taking in the world, of um, the idea of hoarding that people want everything for themselves but do not want to give away. Um, anything. So she put them on the shelf. And so Peter has been watching all this for all this while, very patiently as to when he'd get, get his little cake. Yeah. But eventually even the thin wafer that she makes, she's not able to part with and that makes Peter angry. For he was hungry and faint and surely such a woman was enough to provoke a saint. And all her action like and which is why the poem is long drawn as well, which is how the form ties into the content. If uh, the poem just said in let's say two stanzas that yeah. she made many cakes and discarded them, yeah. it wouldn't have the same effect as it runs through for a whole page and you get to know that she's... So the reputation also tells how miserly yeah. she is Chase. at heart. And he said, you are far too yeah. selfish to dwell in human form, yeah. to have both food and shelter, and fire to keep you warm. And so, <clears throat> St. Peter grows angry. There are angry saints in um, every uh, culture, every mythology. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, in, in our mythology, there's Durvasha Rishi who gets angry at everything, or Parshuram. Um, <clears throat> and this is a good exercise to find out who all the angry saints are in, in, in our mythology. And so he says, you're far too selfish to dwell in human form that you're not good enough to be a human being. A human being is supposed to be generous. Exactly. To have both food and shelter, that you have food, you have shelter, you have all the privilege, mm -hmm. and yet you are miserly, and fire to keep you warm, and you have fire as well to keep you warm in this cold climate. Now you shall build as the birds do, and shall get your scanty food. Since she's been trying to make a small cake, he says that now you shall also get a small cake, that you will get as, you'll be a bird so that you can eat only that much. Now you shall build as the birds do and get your scanty food by boring, boring and boring all day in the hard, dry wood. And see the repetition of boring, where which shows how a woodpecker works, mm -hmm. constantly has to work. Emphasizing on the word boring here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So emphasizing on the word boring, it is also a pun that her life will now be boring because she has to mm -hmm. bore through the wood literally yes. mm -hmm. all day to get her food. So a woodpecker bores through the wood to get a small insect inside the wood and so on and so forth. And then she went up through the chimney, never speaking a word. So she transforms, transmogrifies into a bird, into a woodpecker. Um, and out of the top flew a woodpecker, for she was changed to a bird. So the curse of St. Peter, which is Shrap in Hindi, um, she turns into a woodpecker and flies away and now she'll have to bore through the wood. She had a scarlet cap on her head. And that was left the same, but all the rest of her clothes were burnt, black as coal in, a, coal in flame. So the scarlet cap that she has remains the same. Hmm. Um, all the rest of the clothes are burnt, black as a coal in uh, flame. So this is very interesting. We'll come to it in a minute. Hmm. These, this is called etiological mythology, which is not really needed for school um, children, but um, it's good to know things. Like we explain many things hmm. through mythology. Why does the woodpecker have a scarlet cap? Hmm. So they would tell the story and this is how legends work. Hmm. 
that for example in our culture um, why does squirrel have stripes mm. so it is said that lord ram was playing with a squirrel and <clears throat> and he ran his fingers mm. through its back and so therefore the stripes and that was the acknowledgement of of the squirrel to the building of um, um, uh, ram setu and so on and so forth so this is how um legends are built around animals and all these stories are built so these are not there's nothing historical about them but this is how folk tales are built these are grandma's tales and every country school boy um <clears throat> has seen her in the wood where she lives in the trees till this very day boring and boring for food and so since that time she has been boring for food in the wood um <clears throat> like a woodpecker and that is the curse on this um woman because she was miserly so basically as we can see this this whole legend is to um, is a sort of a moral fable for um, for children and for everyone else that if one is greedy karma hits you back that it will come back to you in some form or the other in this case it comes back in the form of of this curse where she becomes a woodpecker okay. all right so that's a woodpecker with a scarlet head that's the old lady who couldn't serve saint peter Let's quickly um, look at the literary form and devices. Um, as we saw <clears throat> uh, in every stanza, there is A, B, C, B. So let's go back to anyone. Now you shall build as the birds do, and shall get your scanty food by boring, 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 all day in the hard, dry wood. So here, for food and wood rhyme, but do and boring don't, and which is why this is how rhyme scheme is talked about. um alliteration is when the same consonant sounds are rep repeated like we just saw boring 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 so the same sound is repeated and another example in stanza 1 is that they cannot sleep them through here is the the sound that they cannot them through the four words which have um, that simile is when <clears throat> something is compared to something and the word like is used and the children look like bears cubs we saw also in the second stanza um enjambment is when the idea of the first um line continues into the second one generally in poems lines are separate so once when the good saint peter lived in the world below and walked about it let's go there once when the good saint peter lived in the world below so you see that the first and the second line are completely connected mm -hmm. and just walked about it preaching just as it did you know um and look at the previous paragraph stanza they tell them a curious story i don't believe it's true so mm -hmm. those are two different ideas mm -hmm. but here enjambment is when the first line runs into the second yeah. one these are just some nice things to learn <clears throat> and repetition we just saw boring 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 mm. once again it's getting boring to repeat the boring so many times away away in northland and rolled and rolled in flag by boring, boring and boring and boring and repetition like i also said mm. that in folk tales it works um, so uh, to capture a, a child's attention and also in general mm. in many song forms there's a lot of repetition um, to to catch your attention mm. to emphasize a point and these are literary mm. um, devices now there's a very interesting story um related to like we were talking about the woodpecker over here it's the origin of the woodpecker mm. um <clears throat> arachnids are arthropods joint legged invertebrate basically spiders are called arachnids mm. and the origin of the idea of arachnid is in um, greek mythology where there's um the story of arachne and athena So Arachne is this woman who weaves beautiful tapestries mm. and Athena is the goddess of design okay. so they have a contest and Arachne who's a human being wins over the goddess Athena Athena gets angry beats her very badly beats Arachne with a uh, with a stick and and whatever else I'm forgetting and so Arachne is reduced to just hair the rest of her body melts with all the beating okay and escapes and that is what a spider is a little head and all that hair and similarly like you saw woodpecker back calculating to the story mm. and so this is um, and this uh, in western culture ties into ovid's metamorphosis this is all for further reading if you would like to and there are various versions available ovid's metamorphosis in which constantly uh, different animals are transformed into uh, different animals um, human beings into animals and so on and so forth and kafka's metamorphosis in which a person wakes up as a giant uh, spider one fine morning mm -hmm. 
And so the useful exercises to do for students would be to find out such stories where a word uh, is explained through such a story. Like we also saw the stripes on the squirrel's back over here, or why a woodpecker is a woodpecker, why an, a spider is a spider. There are stories behind them in, in mythology. As also find out all these folk tales that are about greed. Uh, for example, in our culture, there is also this story of, uh, there is a Sanskrit story of, which is called Punar Mushiko Bhava, which is also in, in NCRT curriculum, in which um, a, a saint takes pity on a mouse, makes him a cat, takes pity on the cat, makes him a dog and so on and so forth till he makes him a tiger. The tiger wants to eat the saint himself and then he makes him mouse again. He says, Punar Mushiko Bhava, go become mouse again. And so there are lots of every culture, every culture's repository of fables like Aesop's fables or Jatak or Panchatantra in our culture have these repositories of uh, tales. And it would be a very good exercise for students to find out which stories talk about greed. Um, <clears throat> But one thing to note down also here is that St. Peter curses, like this story of the mouse and the saint also, the saint curses. And um, it is a form of a story in which we are made to be fearful of, of God or divinity. Um, whereas another method to look at it is a constructive approach where um, uh, there are other stories in which you are not cursed, but, but you could understand by explaining. And that is also something that we need to think about. We also need to critique these mythologies and not just uh, digest them as they are. So this is what I was saying, etiological myths, these are called etiological myths um, that explain origins and causes. Etymological myths, on the other hand, are words that are explained through myth, like we just saw arachnid. Yeah. That word is explained through myth, how arachne becomes arachne, it becomes spider. Yeah. And whereas woodpecker has a backstory, that is etiological. This is, this one need not know, but yeah. just in case yeah. anyone is, um, is curious. So, um, yeah, I think we are also running out of time. Sure. And so before concluding our session, I mean, uh, we read a beautiful poem here. Yeah. Uh, and you told about exactly what's the summary of the poem, how, how, what message is there in the poem. But you also talked about how tales are, you know, taught to the students uh, mythologically. What do you think is the reason that such tales are, you know, taught to children in the, in the mythological way? Um, well, sure. Yeah. Mythology contains information about our ancestors. Yeah. It's about how society is structured. And also, um, storytelling is, is a great form. Storytelling is something which appeals to everyone, which is why we read film, mm -hmm. we watch films, read books, and, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so storytelling is the best form uh, of learning for, for children. It holds their attention because it's got fascinating characters. And it's also got uh, a message, and, and uh, a message about how to live one's life. Um, and so mythology has is all pervading, has always been there, and has been a part of our storytelling traditions. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a great form and we should learn more and more mythology. Um, <clears throat> but clearly understand that there's a huge difference between history and mythology. Um, and history is factual, mythology is stories which give us some information, which give us some it morals. It can be fictional. It can be uh, fictional. It is fiction. It is fictional. So I hope all our students enjoyed the poem and indeed it was a fun uh, poem and fun message as well in the story, uh, in the poem of today's session. Uh, so sir, thank you so much for joining with us thank today so and delivering such beautiful poem to all our viewers. Thank you so much sir. Thank you. और मैं हमारे दर्शकों से यही कहना चाहूँगी फिलहाल हम इस सत्र को यहीं पर समाप्त करें लेकिन आप कहीं मत जाइएगा हम जल्द हाजिर होंगे अपने स्पेशल सेशन वेबिनार के साथ ठीक चार बजे आप देखते रहिए पी एम विद्या चैनल और एन सी आर टी ऑफिशियल नमस्कार